Well, my viewers and subscribers, good morning. I am going to be doing some pruning of my June plum tree. As you will see that um, there are only a few more June plums left on the tree. And it's time for pruning because I'm having new growth now and blossoms. You will see new blossoms coming up. So I'll, these, some of the limbs are dry and need to be taken off. So at this point in time, I do some pruning. Okay, so watch me as I go along and do the pruning. I try to take off all of the dry limbs and um, some of them you will they would appear like nothing is going to happen again with them but this one is still has some um, greenish thing in it so definitely you know these will spring back some more so I always try to leave those on Yep, every year I have to do this because um, so you have some new growth right here, some small growth right here, right here, right here. So, you know, those are going to come back. These are right already dried up so nothing is going to happen to them again yep this one i think it's dried right down i have um a few more of these June plum trees at the back but I planted this one a few years now and now uh, they are so beautiful so every year I have to trim it and let it look a little decent yep when you with these June plum tree, of course, you, if you don't um, give them nutrients, the June plums will be small. And right, all of these are blossoming right now. In another week or so, you will see a lot of blossoms come out. Um, Um, you will see in my previous videos where um, I was I asked if anyone knows what how we can use a June plum, man. And as I said, I went to Jamaica. I never use I, all I used to do is just eat them when they are ripe. I went to Jamaica, man, and I said, let me try it. And believe you me, when after after I tried it and came back here oh boy when my wife makes this June plum juice man yeah I'm saying yeah I was saying that when my wife makes this June plum juice man it's something else I love it I love it and it gives me um, more reason it gives me more reason to want to care for my trees, my June plum trees, man. They are so nice. Oh, I, you have to be careful about some of them and some parts of it, they're still green. And you'll get June plum from them, leaves coming out. But yes, I really enjoy, I'm really enjoying this. I have another tree, two, two trees in the back 
with steel June plums on it, but I'm still going to try and see if I can start um, start to prune it as well. This mango tree right over my head here is an East Indian mango tree, and I have to prune it as well. Uh, one of the reasons that we prune too is, you know, I'm in the hur um, hurricane area. We are now in hurricane time. So if I don't prune it so that the wind goes through it, then I'll be in trouble to um, have that tree blown over. It had blown over, blown um, slightly over once in another storm and I was able to have it straightened up a little bit but I'm going to be mindful this time to make it you know so that wind can pass through easily yeah I think it's kind of half decent now some of these limbs are still green and they are pushing out new buds right there right here right here new buds and um, yeah you can see new buds right there and here and um, of course you can see they start blossoming blossoming so therefore um, I'll leave those on and look at this I cut off some blossoms here a while ago all right, so I'm going to be moving now to my other trees in the back. So come along with me. Moving to some other trees. really time to prune now and um, as it goes like the other trees like the mango trees and so forth you feel bad when you're cutting off the, the limbs knowing that they are fruitful limbs here's the other tree here with with um, June plum on these see you can see the June plums on these still not much to prune yet on these and this is a fairly younger tree so that's it and then the other one over here as well there's another tree over here not much to prune on the, these younger ones um, so yes I will just do a little bit around here this one here Still have quite a few June plums on these to, to harvest. I might come back around here. I think I got some yesterday and I will come back again um, and get the rest of these because I'm sure my wife is going to make some over the weekend here. Some more juice over the weekend. And as I um, just featuring my June plums today and I tell you right now that I this tree here is, you can see the new blossoms coming up, right here. New blossoms here. New blossoms coming on down there and here. So, June plums are going to be on it because it bears all the year round. Um, and over here, this one that I just passed by here, over here, you see it has June plums on it. And I might have featured in another video the, um, the young young seedlings that I have here a few young seedlings and this one now this is a bigger one bigger tree um, I, I'm gonna leave it right beside this one and um, so that is it for my June plum trees and um, I did some I did some um, transplanting over here uh, 
here is another tree here that I, I think I might leave this one in this spot right there but I have a few trees that I transplanted over here and I have gotten some new pots as well to put them in see you can see my um, new transplant here how, catch, how they catch off pretty good so I have six pot, pots there with, with June Plum and um, I have um, some new pans here that I'm going to be putting um, some more June Plums in and trees in and of course I had mentioned about the um, new suckers that I have in here a lot of suckers in here um, I, as I have those plants, no, those pots to put June Plum trees in and I promised a few people June Plum trees so um, these can almost go and go out now to who, whomever I had promised when they want to pick them up they can pick them up but they have in order to to get June Plum from this um, by um, in, within a year time you have to give them nutrients that bigger one there that's on its way to give start giving June Plum in another couple of months I, I can guarantee you if if it gets into a bigger pot you will start get June Plum for, um, blossoms from it all right so that's the featuring of my June Plum trees for today I um, gonna call it a day when it comes to my June plum tree so remember guys if you have not yet trans um, subscribe to my channel I'm gonna ask you to to do so well 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 yes my viewers and subscribers um, I've just done some um, pruning of my June plum trees uh, especially the one out in the front I have done some pruning and I just figured I should take a little rest because the ones in the back here um, didn't need much pruning at all they didn't need much pruning and they still have a lot of fruits on them yeah but I just want to bring your attention to the um, some of the messages or some of the comments that I'm receiving from my from you all on um, my little backyard homestead here some people are asking when to plant where to plant to plant why plant at certain time and uh, and so forth and I just want to I'll give you an idea of the things I do what I do is not necessarily going to be the same thing that you will do I have different uh, methods of doing things and um, it all depends on the area you are I'm um, in the South Florida um, climate here where it's very hot especially at this time of the year um, from it turns April May June July right down to November you'll have very hot times and the other times are you can it cool so it all depends on what you want to plant at that time um, but I want to just let you know the reason I I do backyard gardening is that um, I'm retired and I need to be active in my retirement I also find what I'm doing very therapeutic for me as I enjoy what I'm doing very very much and my recommendations are though if you are um, in a different climate from I am I want to just tell you before you start though there are a few things to take into consideration your location um, basically uh, that you are open to learn and the learning might comes in different form depending on where you are what you are planting your um, 
space that you have. Of course, my backyard here is very small, and um, and I try to cram a lot of things inside my backyard. I like fruit trees. I plant a lot of fruit trees. I I have mangoes and I have nisberry. I have June plum. I have papaya. I have um, sweet sap. I have sour sap. I have tangerine. So those are some of the bigger trees that I, I have. And um, then I come down to what um, smaller trees like. I do have I plant rather. I have sugar cane. I have sweet pepper. That is bell pepper. I have right here. I have sweet corn, and I have also um, Scotch bonnet pepper. So there are so many things. I have to be looking around to 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 find out and to tell you what I have. Yeah, pineapple. So I have different places that I'll put them, and especially in the hot times, I have to. I do not have a lot of space to sh put them in the shade. So one of the things you have to start first with is budgeting. It, it can be a little costly depending on the space you have. And again, the space that you have might be a different, be different from me. You can have the same, same um, square footage and yet um, you can, it's not um, adequate for, for what you want to, to plant. My square footage here gives me room to plant my few trees and then um, I chose to put my things in pots and pans and uh, other containers. So it is more, mostly a container garden. I budget are likewise for it because again, um, the soil that you have is very important as well. Don't know if your soil type will allow you to put place things in the ground. Like um, for me, part of my soil is very sandy. So certain things won't grow well in it. And um, so I choose to use pots and pans, like for my pineapples. I put them in the ground and I do not get good results. So I put them in pots and pans. And I limit my, at first I used to plant um, all around my fence. All along the fence I used to be planting. All along the fence I used to be planting. And um, right down and around. But I find out that it's just too much and again we have um i have a lot of um uh, wild things that harbor in them like rats and possums probably try to stay come up in them and all of that and then too much pineapples too you know water settles into the um leaves them and can harbor mosquitoes so that's another thing but then, yes, again, you have to make sure you have the space, what you want to plant. You have to, certain things, you have to have good sunlight for it. And there are other things that you don't, um, you have to have shade. So you have to take that into consideration, sunlight, shades, and the type of plants that you, will go, you want to grow, whether it's going to be vegetable or fruits. Again, the pots and pans, how big are they? You want to make big um, pots and big pans that are very difficult to move around. I chose to use ones that I can move around, even if I have to use a, a dolly to move them around or a truck, a small hand truck to move them around. I do that because, again, I'm in a, a hurricane zone and when we have strong winds, I don't want my plants to destroy, so I want to be able to move them from where they are into um, to a safer space. So my pots have to be at a certain size and so forth. Soil, the soil type you're using as well is very important because um, the soil is important that it has nutrients in it. And if this is one that you use in pots and pans, if they have good drainage and all of that. So the soil is important when you're choosing your, that as well. You also, as I said, your, the, the size of your pots and so forth. And if you are going to be doing um, raised bed gardens, you know, you are, you're going to have, those are not movable. So then you have to consider what you're going to put in it. 
what the time of the year you're going to do it. If you are in the cold climate, then Roosevelt Gardens, you know, you can only do that from maybe April, May, June, July, right down to October, raised beds. And then other than that, you will have to do container, um, small containers that you can move around. If you're something that you want to take and put in your patios or so forth, you can do so. A leaf, a leaf fell a while ago and gave me a scare. <laughs> it just came down and I said, oi. Um, so then those are things that you want to um, think about. Whether you're going to be doing organic um, garden, grow your vegetables organic or non-organic, and or you're going to use chemicals to keep away um, worms and other pests from your um, crops. Also, the time of the year you're going to plant. Again, I choose to do certain things at the time of year. I know, like right now, Kalaloo, and um, right there you will see a nice Kalaloo there and they start eating up and all that. So, and in January and February, nothing, nothing would take them. You will have right over there, you will see I have some nice Kalaloo over there. I have to be following up on them just to see if anything start eating them or go on and look underneath the leaves and get them get rid of the worms because it's not many but um right here even i know you notice i have sweet corn right here and worms start taking taking it up right there my sweet corn worm, worm taking up the sweet corn so um even my potato leaves certain um, worms are starting to eat up on some of it but um it's important that, that you know what you want to plant. Um, and different ways of planting as well and caring for them. If you don't have the time, then you're, you're not going to put out too much things and then neglect it and then you have issues with it afterwards. So you have to have time. These are, gardening is time consuming, um, especially if you are in an area where you have to de-weed your garden and all of that. So again, you have to know when to plant and when to sow as well. Um, you also want to look at the um, way you want to stagger your plants. You plant, um, uh, for example, I plant Kalaloo now and then at another time, I will plant tomato, and then I'll plant cabbage and so forth. I will, even if I'm putting them in, in pots, if I take out the cabbage out the pots, I do not put another set of cabbage in it again. I put maybe tomato after I rejuvenate the, um, the soil. And um, you also want to rotate, rotate your crops as well. Um, it's very important to do that. And by rotating, I mean you plant some kalaloo this time. Next time, you rotate it with um, beans. You want to maybe plant tomato and so forth. So it's staggering and rotating is very, very important. And you want to spend time in your garden to, in order to achieve the success. Otherwise, you can be... Um, very despondent if you do not um, spend enough time. Look at that blue jay right over there. The blue jay, they come from my plant. Look at him. Look at him. There. They are very destructive to my plant. Can you see him? Right there. Comes down ready to eat him right there, that blue jay. Can you see that blue jay? Yeah. Yeah, ouch. Yeah, they don't have, they make, don't have fun. They go up on the tree and they eat and they leave it and they go go on to another one. So what do you, what do you know, right? They're eating, eating it. Mm, having the feast. Wow. Yeah. And they, I'm not going to finish that and he's going to come up and try finding another of the mangoes here. I just have about uh, maybe a a dozen inch, a little bit on the tree. But 
I guess they have to eat as well. Yeah, so you yeah, you have to spend enough time, have enough time in your backyard to to be able to have success and to sustain what you're doing. And um, as I said, why why I do backyard gardening? It is I don't have the space to do anything else. I'm from Jamaica originally, where we have um, large acreage and um, it's things that I would do on a large scale to condense it here is it's difficult or it's different. So um, I just do for my, uh, my for, for my kitchen, and of course, if I have excess, I would give my neighbors and, and friends. Yes, that's what I do. Like my pineapple, I can't have all the pineapples. I can have all the um, June plums. I can have all the nisberry. I can have all the mangoes. So we share, I share, and so forth. So I just want to give you a little update on that. But please remember to continue to share my content. I'm on my way to 5,000 subscribers. And um, I will get you in short order with your help. So please continue to share, to like, to comment, and hit that notification bell that when I upload a new video, you will be among the first to see them. Um, also watch those um, ads when they come up. Um, YouTube um, uh, helps, it helps with, with YouTube and the algorithm. It pushes you um, new advertisers to you towards me, and um, also it um, the algorithm push also new um, viewers to get, come on to my channel. So I thank you very much for always being here with me and spending your time. And I, as I strive to bring you good content and. Um, Continue to support all the all of us who are doing this kind of uh, of um, content. Bring you these kind of contents. 